This is Patrick Fischler. I've appeared on TV shows such as Mad Men, Lost, and Weeds. I actually have a real career. So what the heck am I doing on Mr. Media Radio with Bob Andelman? Somebody get my agent on the phone right now. That wasn't very nice, Patrick. Today on Mr. Media, that's mrmedia.com, I'll talk to Neil Hopkins, who played Charlie's musician brother, Liam, on Lost. Come on, you remember Drive Shaft. And is now appearing alongside Haven star Eric Balfour in Skyline. Stick around, and don't trust anyone who lands a flying saucer on your front yard. Hey, did you know that you can listen to the latest Mr. Media show right on your phone with the Stitcher app? Stitcher is smart radio for your smartphone. Mr. Media is on demand and on the go with Stitcher. Download Stitcher for your phone today. Get the free app at www.stitcher.com. That's S-T-I-T-C-H-E-R.com. So much media. So little time. Who keeps track of it all? Oh, yeah. That would be me. This is Bob Andelman, and this is a Mr. Media interview. You know, MrMedia.com, MRMedia.com. Stop by and check it out. There are more than 700 archived celebrity interviews for your listening pleasure. The show is brought to you today by the PartyAuthority.us. Planning a wedding, mitzvah, or corporate event in the New York, New Jersey, or Pennsylvania area? For any and all occasions, call the Party Authority nationwide at 1-800-DIAL-DJs. That's 1-800-342-5357, where one call does it all. Mr. Media is recorded live before a hungry, very disappointed audience standing outside of a deserted Skyline Chili location in the new new media capital of the world, St. Petersburg, Florida. me the first time. <laughs> I suspect Neil Hopkins might see himself as a man this close to a career breakthrough. You probably know him best as Liam Pace, Charlie's heroin-addicted brother and drive shaft bandmate in a couple of backwards-looking episodes of ABC's Lost. He's also had recurring roles on HBO's Big Love and the Stars series Crash and played the long-lost brother of Dr. McNamara on FX's Nip Tuck. Today, he's eagerly awaiting the November 12th opening of his new movie, Skyline, which stars Eric Balfour, co-star of sci-fi's hit paranormal series, Haven, and Donald Faison, longtime star of the ABC sitcom Scrubs, both of whom, I might add, have been on Mr. Media in the past year. Skyline is one of those monster, and I do mean monster, sci-fi films 
that you look at and go, oh, please be as good as you look. And you can see it for yourself at IamRogue.com. The trailer has flying saucers, enormous nasty creatures, lots of shit blowing up, had a few beautiful women losing their clothes, and what more do we need for two hours entertainment anyway? <laughs> Neil Hopkins, welcome to Mr. Media. Thanks. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Glad to, glad to have you on board. Boy, that uh, I don't think uh, audio does that uh, trailer justice, unfortunately. <laughs> no, it doesn't. I mean, it's, it's a visual medium, and uh, they've done some really, really impressive work with the special effects. Have you ever uh, worked with a film that was that special special effects laden? No, I mean I don't think any of us had. I mean this, I, I, we had an event last night in Hollywood, uh, kind of a mixer promoting Skyline, and they showed a few clips. And, and Colin, uh, the co-director of the film, Colin Strauss, he said that I think they had something like 950 uh, effect shots in the film, which is a lot. Wow. So that they they're, they're they're breaking new ground certainly for the budget they made this movie with. Yeah, and did you did uh, obviously I haven't seen the film so I'm at a bit, bit of a disadvantage. Do you did you work with any scenes that that were uh you know effects laden? Um I didn't really I mean yeah yeah, yeah. The, as you can see in the in the trailer um they they added a lot of effects onto me when I'm sort of walking zombie like towards the the light. Um, but I didn't have a whole lot of interaction with the uh, with the gigantic, you know, monster King Kong type creature that you see. Um, that was mostly uh, Eric Balfour and Donald Faison. Mm. Yeah, um, you're a week out from the opening of, of uh, a new movie. Uh, yeah. Am I wrong? This is this is a good moment in time for you. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, it's it's. I, I, I was just saying last night at this event we were at, to everybody else that was in the, the movie, we were all kind of amazed just because it's being promoted so heavily, thank God, by Universal. And uh, it's really exciting to drive around town and see billboards and bus ads every single city block that you go down um, for the movie that you're going to be in. It's kind of surreal, um, very exciting, too. So we have the premiere on uh, Tuesday, and then it comes out on Friday. So, yeah, it's... Uh, it, it has the potential to be a really big film, so we all have our fingers crossed. And you're you're in that nice quiet moment where you're so close to it coming out, and yet you haven't been hit with reviews pro or con, and everything yeah. is still you know. <laughs> yeah, a very exactly. Special moment, I think. Yeah. It is. It is. It's uh, it you know it remains to be seen. None of us have actually seen the film. We haven't seen the whole film. So really, um, no, and. Uh, we we have seen you know clips of it and we've seen moments from it but um we we haven't seen the entire film so uh we're very excited to see they're they're really keeping it under wraps because uh they have you know a lot of problems nowadays with the clips leaking out and and copies of right. it getting online and stuff so they're really keeping it under wraps um they're probably making last minute tweaks to the, the effects as well i wouldn't be surprised does it make you nervous that you're out promoting a film that you haven't seen? Um, it doesn't make me nervous, no. I mean, I, I, I'm excited as hell to see this movie. I think it looks pretty kick-ass. And, you know, from the parts that I have seen, I'm, I'm very excited. But, you know, it, it's I, I wouldn't say that I'm nervous about it. I, I, I think it's going to be a real crowd-pleaser, and I think it's going to do what it intends to do. I don't, I don't think the movie has any intentions of, of being um, sort of a lofty allegory like District 9 was. I think it's it's much more in the vein of just a fun, action-packed popcorn movie, you know. Hmm. Although some of those spaceships and the monsters, well, the spaceships look a little District Nine like. I was thinking that when I saw the the trailer. Yeah, Big I guess hovering they, presence. Yeah, I guess there's a, a similarity, um, uh, but you know, I don't know that there's been that many innovations in the human imagination in terms of spacecraft. I think we all sort of we all have an idea in our minds of what it would look like, and everything is sort of based on that, you know. Right. But I think that they look pretty amazing. They look really, you know, they have all sorts of spikes and stuff. They've they've done this amazing thing with the design where it, it sort of looks like a blend between something alive and something machine. Uh huh. I noticed that. Yeah. Now, are you a, are you a sci-fi guy, or you know, could you take it or leave it? Or um, I, I wouldn't say I could take it or leave it. I mean, I'm a fan of of any any genre when it's done well. And mm -hmm. I grew up obviously being a huge Star Wars fan, as everybody in my generation did. But at the time, we didn't identify it as sci-fi. You know, it was just 
it was just Star Wars. Um, and I think that had a huge impact on a lot of the movies I got into. And, you know, I used to play with the action figures and the toys. So I guess I was a real sci-fi geek. And, and uh, you know, I love 2001, A Space Odyssey is one of my favorite movies. And, um, you know, District 9, I thought, was kind of incredible. Um, I was really surprised um, at, at how moving it was and, and just how amazing it just showed you what could be done with the with the genre you know how how far you could actually go with it and i kind of like when they do that when they when they push the genre as far as it can go in terms of the emotional impact it can have on an audience mm. and at the same time as uh, one of my friends put it a few years ago nothing wrong with going out to the movies just to see a bunch of sh- a bunch of shit blow up exactly there's nothing wrong at all <laughs> get your money's worth I think everybody's going to get their money's worth at the end of the day with with Skyline, uh, regardless of what critics think or whatever. I think it's going to be one hell of a ride, and you know, it's it's definitely shaping up to look that way. So um, we're all very excited about it. So you feel confident that it it's going to be as good as the trailer looks? I certainly hope so. Uh, you know, as much control as I have over it, obviously, I, I certainly <laughs> I hope for the best. I mean. I, I know it's going to be just really fun, just having read the script and you know having been through the process of shooting it. I, I know it's going to be a lot of fun just to see it up on screen. And like I said, from what I've seen, it's kind of exceeded all of our expectations. Now, how did you get the role in this? Did did you did you audition? Did something yeah, I just else read for it. Read for it last December, and um, I, I got called in for the audition, and, and I read for it last December, and uh, it. Just basically, I, I was told that they were interested in me and then went away for the break, came back in January and found out that they gave me this part. And we just started shooting, I think, late January and February. And I think they wrapped in March. And um, it was uh, it was really fast and furious. And we didn't think, we had no expectations that it was going to be coming out less than a year later. Um, it just doesn't happen that way, especially for movies that are this big, you know? Right. So, yeah, I was going to say that that is a little weird. The turnaround is just, it's unprecedented as far as I know in terms of such a complicated movie to make. And, you know, when you when you do something like this, as, as you said in the in the trailer, you're kind of zombie-like at that, at that point. Uh, uh, you know, does acting training really come into play? I mean, you, you, you can't, <laughs> I, I don't imagine you're all, uh, you know... Uh, uh, Method? Uh, Method, thank you. I don't know why I couldn't think of the word yes. You know, it's not a method kind of role, is it? No, no, it's not. And, you know, movies, like, I, I don't really necessarily consider myself a method actor to begin with. I mean, I've I've been to grad school. I grew up doing theater, and, you know, I have an MFA in theater from American Conservatory Theater. So I have all of that training. But when you're doing something like that, I mean, there's a lot of physical work that, you know, you draw upon in, in the training that you've done in terms of how to control your body and how to create the image that needs to be created. But it's definitely a lot of self-conscious acting when you're doing that kind of a thing because you're you're pretending that something is there that isn't there and you're also trying to elicit some kind of visceral response from the audience. So you're aware of yourself and you're not necessarily acting with another person. So it's definitely called upon a different set of skills. Now you mentioned uh, you know that you're a fan of Star Wars, and I'm I'm thinking that you know if Skyline becomes a big sci-fi or genre hit, uh, you know that there'll be fans who'll be dissecting it for years, looking for things that that are a little off. You know, uh, uh, there was a there was a recent thing about a week ago. Uh, uh, there was a funny uh, a clip online of uh, some woman listening to, her, supposedly walking through a Chaplin movie, checking her cell phone. You know, like, yeah. like that could happen. So, yeah. do you think? Uh, do you think any of your scenes? Uh, you know, we might find something down the line that would surprise us. Did you, any it's, Easter it, eggs in your? <laughs> it, it's entirely possible. It remains to be seen. That's a that's that, that's an interesting question. I'm not really sure. I guess it's a, it, it it might happen. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'm just curious. Um, well, let, let's. Um, Let's take a, uh, a very quick break, and we'll come right back. This is Bob Andelman, and you're listening to the Mr. Media radio interview with actor Neil Hopkins, who you'll recognize from Lost, Big Love, and Crash, and who appears in the new sci-fi film Skyline, which opens November 17th. And we will be right back. Ever thought of hosting your own radio show? 
Now you can by registering at blogtalkradio.com. While you're there, check out our selection of premium packages. To start your own show today, visit blogtalkradio.com. This is a public disservice message from the National Lampoon Radio Hour. Don't waste your evenings doing volunteer work at your local mental hospital. Remember, even if you do, the crazy people there will probably think you didn't. Hello, this is Bob Andelman, and you're listening to the Mr. Media Radio interview with actor Neil Hopkins, who you'll recognize from Lost, Big Love, and Crash, and who appears in the new sci-fi film Skyline, which opens November 17th. You might also remember him from this. I, I had to go and uh, look it up, and I, I saw the lyrics, and you're right. I mean, talk about dumb as a rock. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty Very hilarious. Expensive. I always thought it was funny that that song would become the sensation it was supposed to be on the show. It was... <laughs> it, How did you get the role on Lost? And for anybody who doesn't know what's going on here, you obviously didn't watch Lost, but that was a song that uh, 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 Charlie and Liam and, and, and the band Drive Chef, that was their big claim to fame. They had a song called You All, Everybody. Uh, and it, it it's kind of recurs periodically. But how did you... And, and, and uh, uh, Neil appears as, as Liam in uh, a couple of flashbacks during the series. How did you get that role, and did you think it was a one-time deal at the time? Um, the answer the second part, yeah, I mean, I did. It, Lost hadn't come out yet, and uh, it was in the summer. God, it was a long time ago. Um, but uh, it, it was going to come out, I guess, in the fall. And, you know, kind of similar to the way Skyline is plastered around town right now, Lost was billboarded, and, you know, there were best bunch of uh, bus ads and bench ads all over town. So clearly there was a lot of buzz building, but it hadn't come out. And so it wasn't listed as a recurring role. It was just listed as, you know, a guest star. And I just went in and I auditioned for it. And they, they wanted to, they really just wanted to cast a Brit or an Irish actor. And so I talked to my agent and we were both kind of talking about it. And he was just like, well, you know, you should just go in as British. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to do it. So I actually went into the audition pretending I was British and um, I ended up getting the part. And I'm convinced in retrospect that if I hadn't done that, I probably wouldn't have gotten the part. Um, wow. Yeah, so it was. A, I took a chance and uh, and it paid off. And then, it, I, you know, I never would have thought it would have five episodes and six seasons later, it would be this huge, you know, international hit. Yeah. Well, the show and the song, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> It's so funny that that song is, I mean, that sometimes when people recognize me, they just start singing that song, and I'm like, oh, boy, here we go. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it occurred to me that when, when I when I pushed the button to play it, that you might go, okay, had enough of this guy. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, I, you know, it's so funny. I've never listened to the song, like, entire in its entirety. And I was like, oh, wait, there's a second verse? Oh, same lyrics. So it was pretty <laughs> funny to actually listen to the whole thing all the way through as though it was a song, as opposed to so, the clip that it appeared in in the show. I'm guessing you did, your voice is not on that song. No, because they had already recorded it before they even cast the part. So I am a singer, um, and I was kind of excited I was going to sing. And, and what was funny, kind of a funny story, is that they had written all these lyrics, different lyrics, for the song. Um, and You All Everybody was just the refrain. And um, in the audition, like, I, you had to like, perform the song, and so I just made up a tune. And I sang it, and I made up this kind of, this kind of made it sound like Oasis and uh, or the Verve or something like that. I gave it sort of that kind of vibe, and it was kind of embarrassing just because you had to just make up your own song and just perform it as though it was a real song. And uh, and then I thought, well, you know, they part of the reason they cast me is because clearly I, I could sing like a rock star. And then I get I get to Hawaii and I get the recording of the thing, and I'm like, oh, so they're just going to use this. And uh, that's what they used. And it's just a lot easier when you actually get down to it, because I thought I was going to actually record it. But I realize in, in retrospect, knowing what I know now, it's way too complicated to do that. So they already have to have it recorded so that when they're shooting it, you can just lip sync to the playback. So that's how it works. I don't God, even know. You're like the monkeys. Yeah, exactly. I hate to <laughs> expose myself in such a horrible way to just, just you know, disillusion everybody. Wow. But um, yeah, it was really, it was, it was, uh, it was really funny when I finally heard that. I was like, wow, I guess I'm not singing in this. <laughs> but a lot of people to this day still think, even friends of mine still think that's my voice, and they're surprised to hear that it's not. And I'm like, does that sound anything like me? Honestly, it was pretty funny. <laughs> so I guess there's no point in asking if Drive Shaft will ever reunite. <laughs> I mean, you know. I, I, I guess I guess it's it's so funny that you say that though because I remember hearing rumors over the last couple seasons that they were going to do some kind of a tour or something like that or there was going to be some benefit concert and, and I know Dom is kind of a musician and I'm a singer and so I always wondered if that was going to happen and then the two guys who who play the other band members are musicians in Hawaii and they're really good and they have their own band um, so I always wondered if they were actually going to try and do something like that but they never did so it's probably for the best. <laughs> well, I mean, stranger things have happened. The guys, the guys who were on uh, Desperate Housewives, uh, who played played around at being like a garage band on the show, they formed a band with. Uh, uh, oh, why can't I think of his name? Uh, the guy who plays House. Uh, they've got a band. They actually go out and play occasionally. And is that right? I didn't know that. That's yeah. Hilarious. What's it called? Uh, it's not as seen on TV, but it's something. It's something close to that. That's so uh, funny. That's yeah, so, so you know, have, have you ever heard them? Are they good? Uh, I've seen a clip of them. I they, they, you know, they, they're like a garage band kind of thing. You know, like, they probably, you know, they probably if if they were not rich and famous, I don't know that anyone I don't think anybody would be listening them. to them. Yeah, but they, there I, is a certain attraction in seeing Gregory yeah. House, you know, sing. Of course, that's so funny. That's really funny. Yeah, yeah I always wondered if life was going to imitate art in in our case, but it, it so far it hasn't. And again, it's probably for everybody's benefit. So has it been valuable to you? Um, you know, I mean, in an interview like this, of course, we, we certainly play up the, uh, the your connection to loss, but has that connection been valuable to you in, in your career? Oh, um, of course, yeah. I mean, it, it it's, it's not something that, you know, opens every single door to you, but it mm-hmm. certainly opens a lot of doors, and, and it gives you, you know, sort of brand recognition, for want of a better term, you know, that you are associated with this really successful show so that when they see it on your resume, even if they haven't seen the show, and a lot of people you'd be surprised in in the business haven't even watched it, but they know, oh, Lost, you know, I know that's, I know that's popular. So, you know, they sort of perk up and it, and it, you know, and then so many people have seen it that, you know, they, when they see that I was on Lost, they, they immediately want to know who I was. They don't necessarily right away know so it's it's very it's very interesting the react the different reactions and then some people don't really care, but it it certainly has opened some doors but it, I mean it hasn't you know paved the way. It's still a, it's still a grueling business. I understand. I know I had uh, uh, and I boy I'm going to apologize right up front. I cannot remember her name. Uh, the actress who played Saeed's uh, long lost love. Uh, oh, Audrey Gabriel. 
Thank you. On, on no? Andrea, yeah, she's a, she's a good friend of mine. Yeah, she's. Oh well, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. You're right. You're right. You're right. Uh, so yeah. she's been on the show and uh, you know probably appeared about a similar number of times as you, appearing in those kind of flashback kind of situations. And yeah. it seemed like it had been a very good career move for her. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I'm not saying it hasn't been a good career move, but it, it, it's not something right. that like people just immediately start offering you everything. You know, you still, especially in the current climate now, you have to audition for everything. Um, people, there's so many movie actors now doing television, so it, the competition in the last two years has just uh, exponentially increased. But it, it certainly helps. Uh, make, you know, make no mistake about it. It's like to be associated with that show at all is really cool, but also to have a recognizable and likable, likable and a hateable way type character um, mm-hmm. is, you know, it's really cool. And then when people find out that I'm not English and that I wasn't, you know, that I was just doing the accent, a lot of people are impressed by that. So, you know, it's definitely helped. It's definitely helped. And it's been a, it's been a really fun ride just to be associated with it, you know. Well, um, we're gonna we're gonna uh, run out of time in just a minute, but I am curious, what else do you have going on? Where else can we look for you? Well, um, I have shot a feature, a really cool feature called Detour, over the summer that I'm starring in, and um, it's an independent film that mm-hmm. was shot for very little money, but looks incredible. I just saw a cut of it uh, a couple days ago, and uh, I play an advertising executive who's driving to work through the mountains where he lives, and he gets buried in a mudslide in his in his SUV, and the entire movie is basically him trying to figure out a way out of his situation, and sort of reflecting on his life. And it's a, it's, it's a, it's kind of a disaster film, meets you know a thriller, it meets you know has horror elements to it. It's a really cool film, and and I think it's also very inspiring. And it was a great test of my metal as an actor and it was a lot of fun to do and uh, I'm very excited so I'm hoping you know we've entered it in Sundance and all these other festivals and so I'm hoping that uh, you know we're going to see it come out in the theaters in the next year Um, one never knows but it's definitely a a very exciting film at the very least I'm sure it'll come out on DVD but you keep your fingers (laughs) crossed that it's going to make its way to the theaters Um, because I definitely think it's potential when you guys get distribution uh, think about coming back and talking to us about it absolutely definitely Well, and folks, listen, you can see uh, actor Neil Hopkins in the new Aliens vs. America film, <laughs> Skyline. When it, that's the way I'm looking at it. Uh, yeah, it exactly. It opens in theaters on November 12, 2010. You can also, believe it or not, pre-order the DVD already at a great price on MrMedia.com. Uh, can can your fans find you uh, Twitter, Facebook? Do you do any of that kind of stuff? Yeah, I'm on Facebook, and uh, I don't really do the Twitter thing yet. i got to kind of get into that, but um, I'm on Facebook, so you can always find me on Facebook. Terrific. Definitely. Cool. Well, uh, Neil Hopkins, thanks so much for joining us in Mr. Media today. Well, thank you for having me. It was a lot of fun. Good. Glad to have you. Come back uh, when Detour is ready to go. I definitely will. Definitely will. Take care. All right. Good luck. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. And, of course, you can uh, get more original interviews with your favorite TV and film stars, including Skyline co-stars Eric Balfour and Donald Faison. Uh, you just surf over to our main website, mrmedia.com, mrmedia.com. Subscribe to Mr. Media on iTunes, and you'll never miss a show. Just search Mr. Media Interviews from within iTunes and subscribe for free. While you're there, give us a couple of stars. Say a few nice words. Uh, and if you've got an idea for a guest, or if you'd like to comment on this show, or if you're interested in advertising, email me directly at bob at mrmedia.com, mrmedia.com. You can also follow me on Facebook or on Twitter, twitter.com slash Andelman, or facebook.com slash Andelman. Thanks so much for joining us today. Always appreciate you giving up a little piece of your day and spending it with us. And boy, who can resist? Let's hear another round of You All Everybody by Driveshaft. Bye, everybody. Mm-hmm.